Okay. You want to start off with a quick statement about scrimmage, and then we'll jump into questions. Yeah, uh, really excited. Um, I thought, uh, you know, Saturday was a good practice. We had our normal practice. Uh, Tuesday was one of the most physical practices that we've had since I've been here. Um, I actually had to kick the defense off the field a couple of times and let them reset because um, we were in a thud period, not a live period. And the way they were running the ball, it was almost like it was a live period and just you know, being smart. Um, and then, again, we built so off of that practice, I felt like um, you know Thursday was a little bit different. It was a short practice. I really, because Tuesday was so good, I wanted to get our legs back under us to have a really good scrimmage today. And so uh, we're stacking practices. Um, the thing that shows up the most right now is our depth on defense. Um, you know, I, th I, I know guys are going to step up to where everybody's going to know their names. But if you go back, back in the day with the Dolphins, I, I remember, you know, they're the no-name defense. And uh, it's almost going to be like that. We feel like that we're too deep everywhere, you know. And so it's, it's almost like um, it doesn't really matter who's out there. You know, you're going to have guys that really come into their own. Who's going to be a third down pass rusher? You know, I think Amir Washington has a chance to be that. Uh, Braylon Rigsby has had a really, really good week of rushing the passer, so that stuff. But it's one of those deals that's fun depth-wise. Uh, today, offensively, uh, Cameron Brown, um, again, showed mobility in the pocket. Uh, we blew it down, but he would have uh, had a touchdown on speed option. Um, Touchdown catches. Uh, Josh Kelly had a big catch um, for a touchdown, and then Coy Aiken had a big catch for a touchdown. What we did today, uh, we started off the scrimmage just running plays, normal down stuff, but then we went into scenar scenarios over the last two years that we haven't executed well. We had an Oregon scenario, uh, we had a Baylor scenario, and then uh, we ended with the Houston scenario. Uh, up there, we were down 30-27, double overtime, field goal or touchdown, you know, so tied up to go in the third overtime or win it. And then the lot, we ended with two minute. Um, that's where in the two minute drill, uh, Coy Aiken had a big touchdown. And the two minute drill was down by six. We had to have a touchdown. Um, kicked, you know, uh, field goals today, extra points, both Gino and, and uh, Reese are doing a really good job. Stone hit a good field goal. And then today was really our first time to really come after the punter in a scrimmage situation. And, you know, I, I thought Jack did a great job. He does a really good job conventional, but then you see his comfort level when we rugby punt, he really booms it. Um, came out uh, relative, I think, healthy. You know, uh, everybody that started the scrimmage finished the scrimmage. We might have some bumps and bruising and all that stuff. And, but uh, felt good the way we came out. So with that, going into spring game week, uh, any questions? Coach, I'm curious about how you divvied up the quarterback reps with Barron out this week. Yeah, since uh, Barron's been out, we really like, uh, you know, go ones, twos, and threes. And they just, the great thing is we do have really good depth to where we have been able to go ones, twos, and threes throughout the entire spring. And, uh, you know, if Jake starts with the ones and um, for the first compete period or whatever, it could be uh, Cam with the twos and uh, Will with the threes. And then they just rotate throughout practice who gets the one reps. Uh, Cam Brown started with the rump ones today. Um, really high on him. Coming into uh, the scrimmage where you take seven on seven uh, reps and you take any compete reps, so well over 300 attempts, he was at 70.7 completion percentage, you know, which is really good. That's the highest we've had uh, in my three springs. Um, so felt really good about what all of them are doing, but he's having a good spring. I know you wanted Cam to develop the arm accuracy. I guess what's that been like for him so far? Yeah, he, he's doing really well. It's continued. The, the, his biggest deal is, you know, putting a little air on the ball, under the ball, on the deep balls. He's got a really, really strong arm. So anything he's throwing on a line, it comes out. It comes out quick. Um, and he's getting better and better. We're going to spend a lot of time in, in uh, May and June, Coach Kitley is, and, uh, really June when we're back of just – Footwork, you know, the time that he does, he kind of gets his front leg locked, and he really can't, you know, get what he wants on the ball. But his accuracy has been good. Coach, Coach I'm wondering, you? just because obviously nothing's really set in stone with the O line, uh, just how well Sheridan you said he's been looking. I guess, is there any scenario where you see where Caleb doesn't play inside and he plays tackle again at all? Yeah, um, 
you know, we're, we're really lucky to have Caleb Rogers. Uh, kind of give you an idea. Um, the only position this spring that he hasn't played is right tackle. So, and that's his position. He played every snap two years, three years ago, and then last year. So he's played left tackle, left guard, center, and right guard. Um, today, um, he started at left guard. So the starting group today was um, Sterling at left tackle, Caleb at left guard, Sheridan at center, um, Carter at right guard, and um, Ty Buchanan at right tackle. And that was the first time the ones came out. The same time the one came out, Vinny went to left guard, Caleb went to right guard. Um, Sheridan t stayed at center, and then the two tackles were the same. So um, I think Caleb allows us to be able to have depth. You know, we are creating depth, um, but he really, you know, I don't. I, I really want him to play inside because I feel good about Sterling and and Ty at tackle, and I think it's going to help us and it's going to help him. So I guess just between those three of Sheridan and Caleb and. Davion, I guess, who's maybe standing out more at center, and I guess, what are you wanting to see from them as they're kind of working through that? Yeah, uh, you know, Sherry and uh, Carter are looking really good. The the thing with Sherry's more comfortable because since he's been here, that's all he's played, and then Carter's more comfortable at right card because that's really what he's played. But the thing about him, he wants to be a coach after he gets through playing, so he's extremely intelligent. He does a great job making our line calls. It's just getting comfortable with you know, doing all of that. You know, the center just has so much on their head whenever it comes to the calls and everything like that. Doesn't have to be your center, but you know, you really want it to be because he like, you know, sets the rhythm of everything going on up front. Joey, uh, when the transfer portal opens on Tuesday, mm -hmm. how active do you expect to be? How many, how much, how many spots do you have? I, I hope I'm not active at all. You know, uh, I mean, there's always, when we get through uh, next Saturday, um, exactly where we're at, uh, we feel good. But you know, I'd really love to to take this team into into camp and, and get ready to go play uh, this season. You know, we feel uh, depth-wise that we've created a lot of depth. And you know, what's crazy is we're out here, and I'm saying we have a lot of depth. And you know, Joseph and Data Ray is only getting to do Indy. Um, Isaac Smith does Indy, but he only does it by himself. Um, uh, Chapman Lewis, uh, you know, he uh, tweaked his knee on a big interception, but, you know, he's doing good and he'll be back. You don't have Jalen Conyer on offense yet. You don't have Micah Hudson on offense yet. Um, I'm probably missing somebody, but, uh, you know, we feel like we've got a really uh, deep team, so I'm hoping that we don't have to be active at all. But, you know, the world we live in right now, I mean, y'all all saw it. There were teams in the Sweet 16 that, got beaten the Sweet 16, and there were guys that were on those teams that were in the portal the next day. I don't, I don't know if there was anybody in the Final Four, but I'm sure there was, you know, and so it's going to be interesting what's going to happen April 16th. Well, Cam just made his announcement yesterday. Where, where did that put you scholarship-wise, counting everybody that's here plus? We're right back. on the bubble to where we would, uh, you know, like where I always look is – when that guy, if those guys leave, is there somebody on the roster that has earned a scholarship before I, unless it's just we're in dire straits that we've got to go in the portal once you get to this point. You know, it's different in December when you're trying to create a brand new roster. Um, so we're right there. I think we're with that, maybe 84 or 86. I'd have to go back and uh, count. Sticking with recruiting and uh, the roster, how has the construction Everything going on here changed the way y'all recruited in terms of having so many recruits here, and uh, how have y'all adjusted? How have you been able to adjust that? It's an adjustment, but you know, like our adjustment is just because we've been so lucky that you just walk out the back door to the practice field or walk out the front door to the game field. You know, we don't have to bus anywhere. So this has been a little adjustment because we're meeting on the west side and you have to go through the indoor and all that stuff. But it's still pretty nice to have the stuff that we have and meeting room um, but as far as like we, over the last three weeks we've had some of the best I think in the country and, and it's it says a lot you know it's uh, just when this thing is done um, I think our fan base is just going to be absolutely in shock on, on how beautiful it is um, it's just if 
you're down there on field level, it's just almost overwhelming when you start getting into that south end zone. The double T's almost on top of your head. I think it just creates such an environment. It's going to be louder than it's ever been. Um, you know, and it, it helps us because, again, you have no excuses. And I always tell parents, I mean, it says, it says a lot about our administration or our alumni that you put your money where your mouth is whenever you're saying, hey, we want to go compete at the highest level when you have a $250 million project that's been, being built right in front of your eyes. And I think this is your third spring ball here. And, yes. Uh, how much of the roster are guys that you brought in either through the high school ranks or the transfer portal? And what kind of difference is that for you as a coach and staff? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, defensively, um, you're looking at a, a large group. Um, I mean, I think you're only talking could be wrong, DB and James Hanson that hadn't been through a spring ball on the defensive side. You know, they're either like guys we recruited or they were here year one, year two. I could be wrong about, oh, uh, Devin Cromwell. Mm -hmm. And so everybody else has at least been through a spring ball. So you can really see that. Um, we're allowed right now, I think we're carrying more volume, is meaning like we have more defense on at this time than what we maybe had in the past. You know, offensively, there's, uh, you know, up front, there's new faces. So besides that, you know, um, like the running backs, uh, there are guys, and uh, Mason Tharp's had a great spring, and, you know, practiced every practice and doing a great job. The new, all the new uh, is really on the offensive side of the ball. The great thing, whenever you're talking Caleb Douglas, Josh Kelly, Benny, D.C., Sterling, um, John Carlos Miller, uh, those guys have played a lot of football, you know, so they're not young guys that you're talking about that you're counting on. They've played a whole lot of football. Joey, uh, you mentioned James Hanson a moment ago. I don't think they're cast yet. Uh, what, what exactly did he Calf, he had, a, he had a really good calf strain. That, I mean, pretty good, you know, to where it put him out for plus weeks. And so um, he's been training with the strength staff and everything. And, um, you know, I don't think, I think whenever you look at the timetable, um, I think that like full go, like if we played a game in July, like July 1st, we'd have everybody that's like fully released. You know, I think there's gonna be some guys in June that are almost there, like Micah, Jalen, Barron, they're almost there, but they're not there. So mm -hmm. we feel like uh, coming in July is gonna be the time that like, you're gonna have everybody when they're doing all their, you know, uh, voluntary, like they're running the show when we're on vacation. Coach, is there any plans to pull anybody back next weekend and what the format will look like? Yeah, so right now, hopefully, uh, you know, Tuesday's a big practice for this to happen, but uh, we're going to be Taj, Team Taj versus Team Barron. Um, so neither, of course, neither one of those guys will go. So they're kind of like the GMs. Uh, one head coach is Tim DeRuder, the other head coach is Zach Kitley. Uh, coach Juice will call one team on the offensive side of the ball. Coach Cochran will call one team on the defense, I mean, on the other side, uh, Coach Yates is going to call the defensive on one side, and uh, I think Coach Bookbinder is the other. So we have literally, from the strength staff to the recruiting staff to uh, everybody, the nutrition staff, like Gentry's on one team, and we've totally split the teams, and we'll have a true game. It'll be a running clock. Um, you know, we won't overdo it, but it'll be, uh, I want to say it's going to be black jerseys, white jerseys. Really depends on. I think Cayman was because I kind of surprised him with this Thursday, so he started scrambling, going, "Hold on, coach, let me make sure I got a, enough of this color and this color, you know, to put on uh, a full team." Uh, but we're gonna we'll be able to do that. And so, like everybody split, we'll have that out, Dowdy, probably like uh, maybe Wednesday or Thursday to where to be the the full group. It's gonna be a lot of fun. You know, Clay McGuire came up with this. They had done it before at USC and a couple places and. We had done that a lot uh, as far as all spring, um, you know, like Kitley and DeRuder have called the ones, and then Juice has called the twos, and um, Yates has called the twos, and then Josh Cochran's called the threes, and Bookbinder's called the threes. So really trying to, one, uh, keeps everybody engaged. They're taking great ownership, but, man, we've got some guys that are going to be, our younger coaches are going to be great coordinators, um, head coaches, and so we want to give them experience through that. Uh, Player, as far as player availability wise, besides all the guys you talked about that have been out of Atlanta this spring, has there anybody that's had a recent 
No. It's going to be out next Saturday. No. Except Chapman Lewis. Chapman Lewis, which he's, I think, you know, I don't see him. We were kind of trying to gear him up to get this last week. I don't think he's there yet. Um, I, everybody that went today came out. Uh, DB Carroll had a pec strain, so we didn't get he didn't get a lot. He got like Indy early, uh, but he'll be back. I'm I mean, I mean he he he'll be fine. But other than that, you know, barring anything on Tuesday, Thursday we're going to split the teams and let them practice and you know get ready for the game and stuff like that. So uh, who are playing the safety spot there? Safety. Spot. So you go. Uh, well, Chapman spot. Uh, Jordan Sanford. So uh, Jordan Sanford has been with the ones. Uh, JV on Wilcox has been with the two some. I really want to keep him at boundary behind CJ. Him and uh, Marcus battled out. Um, Plunk had a pick today at free safety in the two minute drill. Um, but he, that's a great thing about it. He's like my Swiss Army knife. Like he, he can play everything. He's so dang smart. Um, so he's played some free safety. Um, so that it's uh, like the star's been. Um, BJ and AJ, they flip back and forth with the ones and twos and the chief with the threes. Um, so that group right there, uh, that's another good thing. We've got a lot of depth there and then we got three of the fastest, most athletic safeties in the nation coming in uh, Memorial Day. It's really cool to see. Uh, now one of them's not a safety, but if you look at Jacoby Williams, you look at Lee Cascara and you look at Peyton Morgan, that's three of the fastest kids in the nation in the 110 hurdles. You know. Jacoby Williams went 13-8 the other day in the area track meet. And, um, so, you know, the guys that didn't come in, uh, the two big ends wanted to play basketball, and uh, and they had a really good season. And then everybody else, Oliver Wells got a chance to win a state championship. Elite does, Jacoby does, in track. So we get some really good guys that um, – Coach Yates does a great job getting the young guys ready to play throughout the year. I think that's the strength of Coach Yates and Coach IU. Coach, I'm wondering, you might have answered this already before, but I guess at what point during the summer do you expect Mike to be? I think July. Like, he and he, all three of those guys, uh, Baron, um, Micah, and Jalen, barring any setbacks, are all expected to be cleared like that first of July. Um, Jalen and uh, Micah went to the doctor this week, and uh, they're progressing great, you know, and uh, Mike is fired up because he's getting to move around a lot, you know, and, and uh, getting closer and closer to uh, really running, you know. And then uh, Conyer got off the his scooter and is now walking around, and so it's going to be good. Um, it, it's going to be good to have those guys back. We've got time for about one or two more. Coach, can you assess uh, those transfer O linemen and just how you think they've done today and this week? Yeah. Well, they're they're definitely one of us. Like they're they are uh, they're a good group. They're they, they, we we've man, we've got so many just good people that we've been able to you know recruit. And so Sterling's really athletic. Um, he's got long arms. Um, I thought I think he's done a really good job in pass pro. Uh, Vinny is like that dirty nasty guard that you know he loves contact. He seeks contact. Um, He's one of those guys during off season, and I'd be like on him, and he goes, "Coach, I'm not great at this, but I'm pretty dang good when the helmets come on." And, and sure enough, you know, like he's he's that guy that really seeks that contact. Uh, Mo is a big body, 6'6", 340 pounds right now, and and is really doing a good job. He's long. The thing about uh, and that's Maurice uh, Rodriguez. You know, here's a guy that hadn't played a lot of football, and so. Uh, He's doing a really good job, but there's like the growing pains of it's not JUCO and it's not high school and things move really fast. But I've been pleased. He's a huge body. He covers you up. And then DC, what I love about him, Carter, is he is very intelligent. Like, um, you know, he reminds me a lot of Rabbit. Like Rabbit right now, the reason he's moving up in the draft boards, of course he had a great combine, but, you know, people were going, is this kid for real? Man, he knows so much football. And whenever you sit down with Carter and talk football, um, he's got a really high IQ. So I think they're fitting in. They're really, Caleb, y'all know Caleb's personality. So having a Caleb really helps us because he brings that room together. He's always got him laughing. Um, and so been really happy with that. And been happy, you know, with the, the growth of our 
tight ends, you know, that's another group that we've brought in um, that have done well. Coach, you mentioned earlier uh, John Carlos Miller. How have you kind of helped him adjust from being you know, so far from home? That's my guy, man. Mama's birthday was last week. And she came out here to see him, so it was good to have her out here. Um, you know, I always tell these guys whenever they start, you know, talking about the distance of if they're out of state or wherever they're at, it's like, you know, you better hope, like he's from uh, Carolina, so I'm like, hey, you hope Carolina drafts you. You know, you're, at some point you're going to have to grow, you know, and um, he really loves Texas Tech. He loves his teammates, but, you know, he's never been, you know, this far away from home. And so the one thing that I really try to get him to understand, because I've been through this, it's not me, it's my son. You know, I spent – I got to think, man. I coached him in high school, and then I coached him in college. I saw him every single day until he was 21 years old. And then all of a sudden, he's in Carolina away from me. I never saw him. And so I know how he kind of feels. And so I always remind him, man, like, it's easy to FaceTime and say I miss you versus, hey, FaceTime and talk about how grat how grateful you are for the things that you get at Texas Tech. Because he says that. He's blown away with just how he's treated. And I said, talk where you're talking from that attitude of gratitude, and I said, all of a sudden, you'll feel, it'll feel different. It's not like, oh, woe is me, which is really not like that, but it is hard. Like anybody that's away from home, that's a younger guy, um, it's an adjustment, you know, and the great thing with him is like, uh, one thing we talk about a lot is like the football field's kind of our sanctuary, and so when you walk through the gates, you just get to be with your brothers, you get to play football, a game you love, like it's, Leave everything behind you. It's going to be waiting on you. You know, all your problems are still going to be there. How about just come in the gates and enjoy life? And so, just, I, mean, I know it's just not John Carlo, but we talk about it all the time because tough things are happening to everybody in their lives. And we get that moment of two hours to, like, hey, let's just let it go and, and enjoy being around each other. He's special. Um, uh, when Jalen gets back, I know he's special. And it's that is a fun room. They, like, I don't have to worry, figure out where they're at. Like they're all sitting in Coach Cochran's, which is the, one of the suites up there. They're sitting in their in his room, like just BSing 30 minutes before the meetings. Like they're all in there. Like if the strength coaches are checking roll and they're like, where are the tight ends? They've stopped asking because they know they're all in there just talking about life. You know, and you got some really good personalities. Coach, can you give us an idea of the rotation on the interior of the defensive line right now? Um, you know, when I – that I was, Kirby and I were talking about that today. I had a big smile on my face because, you know, when we first got here, if you go back to year one, Jalen and, and Tony had to play outrageous snaps. I mean, like almost 700 apiece. And if you look at anybody else in the nation, the highest was a team that played in the – national championship and that kid played like 500 snaps so our guys are playing 200 snaps more and we didn't want that it was just the nature of the beast of our depth last year we were able to play four um, you know we start tomorrow it's going to be Quincy and Duda starting um, and then you start rotating in like uh, you go Quincy and Duda and then you go Trey McAlpin who's had a great spring really came on at the end of the year D.B. Carroll James Hansen um, but like Jaden Cofield made a play today that was really eye-opening. He's doing really good. Uh, Rigsby, the thing I like about Rigsby right now, I think he'll keep progressing the stronger he gets as far as stopping the run, but he's really explosive in the pass rush. So early in the year it might be that he's a third down guy. But I think we have, I think I just went to seven. I really think that we have seven guys. You know, you're going to have four to five of those old guys that are like your meat and potatoes, but you're going to be able to – you know, Cofield's going to be able to play 10 to 15 snaps or more, you know, but right now that, Brett Rigsby's the same way like that. You know, we've never had that, you know, and it's the same way. Like, that's the thing about defense. If you start going through, like, inside backer, you go Ben Roberts, Jacob Rodriguez, but then you go John Curry and Bryce Ramirez. Uh, that's not counting Dingle where he ends up, you know. And then if you go to the outside backers, you got Joseph Adetaray and Isaac Smith, Charles Esters, Harvey Dyson, Dylan Spencer, Amir Washington. Like we have never had that. And so that's the difference in the defense. You know, we're hoping that an alpha, like 
you know, and they will. They're there. They're, they're just the ones that are probably alphas at that position are babies. But it's just going to be like trying to overwhelm people with how fresh we are and how hard we can play. All right. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Thank you all. Thank you.